Anita. Hello, Wojtek. This will be a sort of weird talk. Um, uh, during preparing this, this podcast and the topics that we would like to talk about, um, we encountered this sort of uh, issue, problem, don't know how to call it, maybe a challenge, uh, with marketing and SEO especially. And we noticed that the term industrial design sort of carries a lot of weight with it and no weight at all. Like people <laughs> interpreted it differently. And then in a couple of conversations I had with uh, uh, people I met when they asked me where I work and I said that at an industrial design company, they like looked at me and repeated the question, but slower. Like I didn't understand because my explanation uh, wasn't good enough for them. Uh, so I figured maybe this will be, this is a good chance to talk about some of the terms that are used within our industry that also exist in other industries or with other types of companies yeah. and are simply interpreted different. I, I, I mean, in your experience, have you had examples like these that you thought that something was pretty obvious by the definition and it turned out that the client had something else in mind? Uh, I think the m main uh, issue is with the term of product design. Product design. Product design, but because it is quite a broader uh, term. Yeah. And we have industrial design, which is uh, usually leads people somewhere towards the manufacturing stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they usually think that uh, it uh, regards more heavy machinery, for example, yeah. and like heavy duty stuff. So, like when they think industrial design, they think big machines, yeah. and not necessarily like a remote control. Factory plants and yeah. assembly lines and stuff like that, not necessarily all the stuff that uh, surround them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's basically everything that's manufactured. Yeah. And yes. anyway. Um, actually, we can go uh, towards the uh, definitions maybe, yeah. uh, because what is design and what is uh, industrial design. Uh, I really like the definition uh, of design by Penny Spark, who is um, historic, who is an author. Uh, specializing in a history of design and she defines design as a process of shaping uh, surrounding and okay. objects in that so surrounding uh, in a way to make them uh, function and look as we want them to okay so it's like really that's, nice broad yeah, and sleek, elegant, yeah, yeah. <laughs> elegant uh, definition mm, and industrial design uh, actually it is a quite new uh, subject of uh, people's uh, okay how, how new, what do you mean, like that is barely 300 years old or? Uh, barely 200 years old, I would say, okay. because uh, it started somewhere during the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. Uh, I don't have very broad historical knowledge, but uh, it started during that shift from uh, craftsmanship and craft -made, craftsman's made objects yeah. uh, towards the uh, factories and mass production. Okay. And uh, that was the time where the need of combining two sets of skills happened because uh, usually uh, you, at that time users of those new uh, mass-made product uh, thought of them as soulless and you know yeah. lacking the uh, artistry that uh, craftsmen can offer. Okay. So uh, that was the time when that need of a designer having two strong feet yeah, so they, there was suddenly a need to design for the production line. Yeah, for different tools, basically, yeah. but uh, okay. yeah, with uh, same attention to details and to uh, human needs, I would say. But like you said, today industrial design is about designing anything that is physically manufactured, not necessarily in mass production, right? Yeah. True. Um, so you've mentioned um, Product, product design or product, product, yeah. product design that that this also causes confusion. Yeah, because uh, I consider myself a product design, yeah. but uh, physical product design. Uh, but uh, I you know you also consider a product designer. Designer, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> product designer, but uh, during the course of you know um, new stuff emerging in the world, internet yeah. and. Uh, mobile phones, apps and stuff like that, there was a need to design all of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also have product designers who create websites, who yeah. create apps and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and they do uh, put product on the market, but they are digital products. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I found the same with uh, product development. Like w if you yeah. would if we try to find a product development company, you would probably get the, f the first page of 
your search would be uh, software companies. Yeah, software houses basically. and stuff like that. And uh, product development, uh, like uh, new product development departments in companies are departments solely uh, dedicated to developing new physical products and introducing them later to the market. True. Uh, but uh, I believe that a set of skills or maybe way of thinking is similar in both of, the fi of those fields. I mean, the physical world and the software world, yeah. I would say, because uh, you still need to think about the end user. You still need to think about constraints that uh, technology use brings to you. But the outcome is different. Yeah. Yeah. And since software and the IT world is so, well, uh, I don't want to use the word popular, popular, but it's very mainstream, so to speak. Everything is digital. So people often, first when they hear product development or product design, they instinctively think about their app uh, or piece of software that they use on the laptop, right? Yeah, this is kind of uh, the digital world became more obvious for a lot of us. And, we, uh, and this is the world when we uh, see uh, much more some stuff much more fast, faster, some stuff happened faster. I mean that, for example, um, launching different version and newer version of some application, mm -hmm. it's much more quicker and, and noticeable. And yeah. for example, launch a new car, new phone and stuff like that, it takes years. So it's harder to um, get a grasp on that. Yeah. Uh, another term that I think sometimes is misinterpreted uh, is uh, research and development. Sometimes I have the feeling that for some people R&D is like googling intensively. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not it. Uh, research and development sometimes is uh, aggressively googling stuff because you need to conduce your desktop research, but sometimes it's going to, I don't know, some experts and talking with them. Sometimes it's to having a workshop with potential users to maybe mm -hmm. have some insights uh, in the way how they use some stuff yeah. and stuff like that. But um, research and development consists also with development, yeah. which is iterative, uh, improving and experimenting and exploring. Um, experimenting, so it yeah. requires like testing, not testing. just yeah. theoretical, uh, you know, yeah. uh, thoughts, but practical yeah use. you are dealing with physical world so it is best to and that's why I think also sometimes uh, people are surprised to hear um, how much time research and development takes B because if they instinctively think about like googling something for some yeah. time then it doesn't seem like it should take a lot of time but when you take the full R&D process into consideration the development part I'm not sure, but that's my guess. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the development part takes way more time than the research part. And you can never tell how long it will take. It's true, uh, because it is a um, process you have to kind of evaluate your outcomes on the go and um, see if they're aiming into the qualities you want to achieve at the end. Uh, so it is... Uh, it requires more elasticity in thinking, I would say, because uh, sometimes the outcomes surprise us and we have to ask ourselves question if is that outcome good enough? Is it something that uh, will satisfy the function we want to have in the future product, and etc. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and next one, uh, I have in my short time here, I have already experienced <laughs> the confusion in the word prototype. And I can imagine you can, you have experienced it a lot. Yeah, it's a prototype is a whole different <laughs> story, I would say. But uh, mainly uh, the prototype is, uh, it can be different things because it, the prototype can be a different thing each time it uh, come to exist because prototypes serve different functions on the different stages of the uh, design process. Okay. So for example, when we are um, we are during the conceptual phase. Mm -hmm. We can make ourselves a very crude um, prototype of the looks of the device and see uh, if it fits our needs in the yeah. real world. But we cannot uh, check the mechanical stuff inside yeah, sure. because it's just for the looks. Um, but during the mechanical phase, we make a lot of prototypes because that's basically on what our work is based 
in that time. Mm -hmm. And those prototypes serve different functions. For example, they check if uh, we are able to assemble the electronics inside, mm -hmm. uh, how well do our, we can fit them, if we need yeah. to improve some stuff that, uh, I don't know, are for mounting screws inside, or some other prototypes can ch check if uh, our design is waterproof, uh, or maybe if, if not, so uh, where are the leaks, yeah, for example, yeah. etc. Because um, this is the only way to check what we've done in a computer, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. designing in the, in the CAD software. Well, I, I've noticed that uh, people, uh, clients who don't have experience in designing uh, new products or physical products yeah. in general, uh, they sometimes think that a prototype is basically the, a master copy of the device that they are True. Uh, planning to introduce to the market and sort of the, they, they not knowing the process because it's a new process for them. They don't know that the first prototype might be like we have somewhere here uh, just a piece of foam sculpted yeah. in a yep. specific shape that we yeah. intend to test if it's True. a good shape or not. So these are just the uh, visual prototypes, I would say. And okay. even after the mechanical phase, when we have that prototype uh, in which we can fit some stuff inside, we can fit display and battery mm. there, uh, we almost uh, have a feel of the final, um, final looks of that device and final functions. Uh, most of the times, those prototypes are still made with the surrogate technology. So they're not, um, for example, when we are designing for the injection molding, mm -hmm. the final prototype is not made by yeah, injection molding. Yeah, you don't have tooling. And, yeah, yeah, because tooling is really, really costly and uh, preparing that, that tooling also takes, takes a lot of time. So uh, usually it is uh, 3D print, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, in its structure, in its uh, geometry, uh, regards all of the mm, demands of uh, injection, injection molding. molding. Yeah, so um, when working with a industrial design studio, um, expecting that the end result will be a functional prototype, you should still keep in mind that it's not a... It's not a product. It's not a product, okay. right? Yeah. It's something that, if made correctly, is ready to become a product after uh, going through the details with the manufacturer. Yeah, right. exactly. It, it can be a great reference uh, during the talk with a potential subcontractor or manufacturer, uh, but it's not the product yet. It's, yeah. uh, we are close, but yeah. not there yet. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, uh, one other term that uh, uh, Rafał uh, pointed out to me was um, the, the term that is usually associated with software development, which mm -hmm. is agile development. So. We, from, we also use this methodology, the Agile methodology, yeah. but in our case, uh, it is the same, but it also is very different than in software companies, right? I would say so. Uh, basically, f in my, uh, from my point of view, uh, the Agile strategy of running your business or running the project is more or less thinking in a designer way, mm -hmm. I would say. Okay. I don't want to use term design thinking because it's already taken, but you know, <laughs> the design approach towards yeah. the uh, developing new project okay. and new stuff. Because it is uh, doing a step, analyzing what happened and uh, improving what you are doing uh, to take another step. And uh, I think that, um, that Agile is a quite popular uh, world mm -hmm. <laughs> toward businesses now. And I think it's a good thing because it learns uh, our clients maybe, or mm -hmm. people in general, uh, that developing new products or new stuffs, uh, it is an iterative process. Yeah. And it is a process then uh, in, during the which we have to say, okay, this is good enough, uh, mm -hmm. we can proceed. This is the quality we're happy with, we can yeah. go and implement it into a production. So basically it's the same process, but in the case of developing a physical product, especially one with electronics, yeah. uh, it's it's the agile method, but it's not a. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's as quick as when developing yeah, uh, sure. software, right? Because you, you, sometimes you simply it's impossible to have a one week uh, sprint for developing a feature or testing a feature, right? Yeah, it it is impossible because uh, we are constrained by the, for example, uh, waiting until the prototypes are made, the physical yeah. ones. We had to order them or print them in the house. 
assemble them and mm. then test them. So or this is something that uh, yeah. also elongates the whole process. Or availability of components. Or availability of components, yeah. yeah. That's okay. a huge issue now. Um, so, uh, mm, in, a, in a discussion with um, with Rafa, the other Rafa. The other Rafa. <laughs> the Rafa. The Rafa. Uh, we, uh, we talked about um, the importance, but also sometimes uh, confusion that uh, goes with uh, preparing visual concepts for a client, especially when we have clients who come to us um, to fix a situation where they have received a visual concept from another company or, or, or person that turned out to be unusable in the manufacturing yeah. process or in, fur in further development. So um, it, it means that somewhere uh, in outside the world of industrial design, a visual concept also somehow is uh, seen as something that is in a way ready 100 percent to to go on to be to be made and mm -hmm. it isn't right it isn't at best it is correct technologically so mm -hmm. it is a concept that have looks and probably won't change much during the mechanical uh, design process yeah and at the worst case and the worst case uh, we have to change it and these are the uh, cases we had in the past we had a few uh, projects like that that have been designed in a way that it was impossible to, for example, injection mold them. Okay, and so they, they were... were planned to be uh, manufactured in a way. So this is a big, big no-no. <laughs> okay, so bad thing to they, do. They, they, they weren't. Uh, they were designed, but they weren't designed with the thought of engineering yeah. and manufacturing. Yeah. So that's maybe that's a good differentiator between design on itself and industrial design. Mm, I would say that. Uh, probably is because a good industrial designer or a good industrial design company uh, should have strong both legs like you know standing on a foot of humanities and thinking about looks ergonomics and emotions because yeah. that's very important during buying stuff and choosing stuff yeah, to, sure. to surround yourself with especially with consumer products especially right? with consumer product uh, and the other leg should be engineering yeah. and uh, the, being the not humane, <laughs> not so humane, you know, the robot leg of, of a designer. Yeah, so um, that, that's the clash that uh, for some is hard, for some is fascinating. And yeah. it's really important to, to combine those two words. In your well, I guess that's the uh, sort of advantage of working in a team, right? Because you can have True. people who specialize one is the robot yeah. and the other yeah. one is the artist. The soft artist, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I really, that's why I really like working in a team because being a freelancer can bring yeah. those issues up, you know. To... Well, you're m more on the human leg, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you, um, does this uh, working in a team where you have other designers or engineers who are on the sort of other balanced side, do you, when designing a product, do you share the a parts of design or do you like learn from them on the, you become a, a bit robotic yourself? Uh, I think both, but most of the times we are sharing uh, work, sharing the workload, I would say. Uh, because everybody are different and each person mm. in the team has a different set of skills that yeah. you know uh, are great to make use of them in some some uh, parts of other I wouldn't have so much fun during the DFM mm. than others but but some of them would be really miserable doing like helping yeah. the client with uh, I don't know the creating right color. Uh, picking the right color or preparing the strategy for the product with big question yeah. what do you want to tell with your product yeah, yeah, sure. Humankind, yeah. Yeah. Um, just to be clear, we really love uh, engineers. You're not robots. You're no, people. You're people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <I'm> sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last sort of term on, on our list is a 3D model. Yeah, so before working uh, in the industrial design uh, sort of industry, it sounds weird. Um, industrial industry. Industrial industry, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I work in a different creative industry, and it was in uh, media. And uh, getting 3D uh, uh, designs or 3D objects for the need of, for example, an animated uh, video. Mm -hmm. uh, even then, I it was clear to me that people have very different definitions of what a 3D model is. Because if you speak to an engineer about a 3D model, usually it's something way, way, way more complicated than what a motion artist uh, requires. Yeah. But just within our scope of work uh, in industrial design, a 3D model still can mean many things, right? True, uh, and I think that it is a term similar to the prototyping because different 3D models have a different purpose. Uh, for example, at the beginning when we have our conceptual phase, um, those 3D models are more of a representation of the future idea that can be developed. So, um, so you can't take them to a manufacturer and no, tell them. I'm regret to inform you that now <laughs> you cannot. Damn it. Uh, yeah, and they're m mainly serving a purpose of communicating that our idea and communicating how we uh, vision execution of different functions or qualities of the product that uh, client asks us to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, more soft, I would say, uh, type of a model. That, that's uh, just a presentation. Yeah, right? just a presentation, and and that's it. Oh, hello, fly. <laughs> And uh, during the later phases, like mechanical design, we have uh, we are building actually mm. the correct CAD model that uh, can be used for further talking with the subcontractors. That's the presentation part, the presentation type of 3D model yeah. that uh, lets the client, for example, pick a direction for the design, exactly. or maybe and to make um, be sure if it communicates the right way that they that they want to. But still, yeah. when you take that design, that project into further development, you go into the nuts and bolts and the uh, surface tensions and different types of things that are not at all in the first type of model. Yeah, right? because uh, during the um, conceptual phase, you are mainly judging the looks of something. Mm. And during the mechanical phase, you are judging and improving the insights, for example, mm. and stuff that holds all of that together. Okay. So, uh, there wasn't a lot of those terms, but still having confusion, confusion with any of them can be a real um, pain. Uh, because as we look at them, they're, they're basically some of the most important and basic terms used when developing a new product, yeah. introducing it to the market, or even working on a concept, right? And knowing what a uh, what kind of 3D model you use, you need to what to do what with it, uh, or what is industrial design, or what does it mean that we're going to work in agile uh, methodology, or when you know that you're going to end up with a prototype, it's important to know what sort of prototype, what kind of prototype. So True. there aren't a lot of those confusing uh, terms, at least now it seems so, but they seem to be the most important ones. True, and uh, I think that the, each project starts with the educational phase, <laughs> regarding yeah. the education, uh, educating our clients maybe, yeah. and to um, maybe building the you know language, the common language that everybody will yeah. understand and everybody will be at the same page. That's why we have the Mind Cellular's industrial design process, right? True, which that you, helps which a lot. you can uh, hear about in another video, but. This is something we introduce at the very beginning uh, of cooperation and it helps educate the client, right? The yeah. ones that have little to no experience with the process. True. Okay, well, I hope we managed to clear some terms up and uh, I hope no more hope uh, will appear and this will solve all the industrial design yeah, problems no in the world. No more question asked. Everybody will be educated. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you.